Welcome to the build log number 4 video. In this video we'll look at the anodized aluminium rods, the redesigned left motor mount and X carriage, and also the X and Y end stops. Well the anodized aluminium rods are finally here. I had to buy this in a 3 meter length and chop it down myself. The first difference you'll notice between the raw aluminium on the right here and the, uh, anodized al the clear anodized aluminium on the left is the surface finish. The raw aluminium is very shiny while the clear anodized has a dull or a matte finish to it. The second difference between these two rods is the thickness of the tubes themselves. The original rod I was using only had a 1mm thickness while this anodized stuff has a 2.4mm thickness so that was a bit of a bonus. Uh, that means this one's a bit stiffer, but also a little bit heavier, but um, I don't think that's going to be much of an issue for the 3D printer. The next difference between these two rods, and these are both 10mm diameter, if I measure the uh, raw aluminium that I used, or have been using up until now, the raw aluminium comes out pretty close, 9.98mm uh, in diameter, so that's not too bad, but the anodized aluminium is a bit less. If I measure this now, we're looking at 9.94 millimeters in diameter. So the tolerance on the anodized is not as good as the raw aluminium. The next thing which is different between these two is the actual surface uh, friction. I was actually quite surprised with this raw aluminium. If I um, uh, just put my two, two fingers on here and slide down, it's actually quite difficult. There's a lot of friction preventing me from sliding my thumb and finger down the rod. But the anodized aluminium is, is quite a bit slipperier. It's much easier for me to slide my thumb and finger down here. It's not as easy, not as um, uh, non-slip as like a Teflon, of course, but uh, it's still a hell of a lot easier to, uh, to slide an object down this rail than it is on this rail. And that has repercussions regarding these linear bushings. When using the raw aluminium with these self-lubricating bushings, I noticed in general use with these rods, um, after a couple of minutes, I've noticed that it was leaving like a black uh, soot or like a black residue behind uh, on the rails. But on the anodized aluminium, after the same amount of time of using these self-lubricating bushings uh, on the anodized rod, uh, there was no black soot left on here at all. So I just assumed originally that the, the black um, lubricant, well the lubrication coming out of the bushing was being deposited on the rod and that's what I was seeing but because I'm not seeing that with the anodized it was more likely the aluminium oxide layer uh, coming off uh, over time that people have been mentioning so that is uh, a win for the anodized aluminium. So the properties of this anodized aluminium rod has changed the way that these bushings interact with it. There's none of that black soot being left and it's a slipperier surface but also the tolerance or the diameter is slightly smaller uh, on this rod. So what that means initially is just the initial test of sliding a uh, bushing on here. Of course it slides just as freely as it did on the uh, raw aluminium. Now if we move to the double bushing which is constrained in this plastic cylinder, same thing, there is absolutely uh, no friction on here and I can, can move that back and forth and there's no binding uh, or sticking whatsoever. That also means that if I go back to my original X carriage design where I simply had uh, the double bushings cable tied uh, on either side of this, this too also exhibits absolutely no binding uh, whatsoever. It slides with gravity without a problem. So uh, potentially I could have stuck with my, pardon the pun, original uh, X carriage with these double bushings cable tied. The big disadvantage of course with using any linear rail system is if the tolerances are out, for example this anodized uh, aluminium is 9.94 millimeters and the internal diameter of these bushings are about 10.05 that's quite a bit of play. That's up to 0.1 of a millimetre gap or play between the inner diameter of the bushing and the outer diameter of the rail. And you can see that here. If I position uh, the X carriage like that and wiggle this back and forth, you can see there is just a little bit of play there. And I think if I stuck with this design, that wobble uh, would probably show up in the print. So I need a way to be able to uh, get rid of that wobble 
uh, because of the gap between the bushing and the rail. To start with, I've placed the X carriage with the cable tied bushings onto the uh, X gantry. And unlike the Build Log 1 video where this was very tight and it was binding and sticking all over the place, this is actually sliding quite well. And because we have two rails which of course might be just slightly out of alignment, that's actually assisting in getting rid of that wiggle that we had with just the one rail. And I could almost get away with this design on the printer, however, um, there is just the slightest amount of wiggle on here, but I'm not sure if uh, that would affect the print quality or not, but it, it's nice to be able to get rid of it, get rid of it in total. What that also means is, from the Build Log 1 video, the uh, double bearing at the top and the floating bearing at the bottom is no longer required because I don't have the problem where these bushings turn into brakes on the raw aluminium rod. I tried a couple of different designs in an effort to get rid of that wiggle in a way that could accommodate any of you that purchased the anodized aluminium, which is within spec, for example, you buy one and it's exactly 10 millimeters, or it's somewhere in between the 9.94 and 10 that I've got here. Rather than just redesigning this part to fit my uh, rails, uh, they might not fit yours. So I've kept the, the distance between where these bearings will sit on the X carriage at where they should be if you had the, the proper 10 millimeter rails but I've allowed this top double bearing uh, double bushing sorry to be screwed in and also pushed down with this screw and nut assembly up the top because all we're after is a 0.1 of a millimeter uh, displacement of one of these double bushings just so it makes contact with the rail which would then get rid of uh, the wiggle. The problem with this setup though is because I'm allowing you know 0 0.1, 0 0.2 of a gap here, that means when you screw in this double bushing, which also has an oval shaped um, a, a mounting point so it can actually move up and down and lock into place, that means when you screw this into place, you, you, there's no guarantee that it's going to be perfectly aligned with the rod. And what I've found with this, even without um, having this screw here to push down, is it's it's too uh, stiff or there's too much friction on the rail because you're not able to get it perfectly aligned. If I had this set up, here's an, here's an earlier design, where there is no, no uh, allowance at all to tighten the rail, so that one just fits in there and locks and that one just fits in there and locks in, that moves just as freely as having uh, two of these on the rail and there is absolutely no friction. So I needed a method that um, I could still have these perfectly aligned, but we want to introduce just the slightest amount of misalignment, I guess you could say, to get rid of that wiggle. So as I want to introduce just the slightest amount of misalignment for me with these rails, which you may not need if you're using the proper 10 millimeter diameter rails, is I've gone back to the fixed design where these screw in without adjustment. That means they're perfectly aligned and they, they, they move freely. But instead of just clamping them down flush onto the X carriage, you can use either captain tape or electrical tape. And the thickness of the tape is what we're after here. So I've just cut off a sliver of this electrical tape and a trick we can do is we want to raise one side of this of this uh, X carriage. So for example, we'll put the tape uh, there. So then when we screw that in, we've raised this side by, uh, and this tape is 0.15 millimeter. So we've raised this side by 0.15ish of a millimeter. It does get squished a bit, so you might need say two layers in there. And on the opposite side, Rather than putting it on the same side, of course, we put it on the opposite side here. So this double bushing is kind of skewed upwards on this side, and this double bushing is kind of skewed upwards on that side. And the combination uh, between those two and the thickness or the number of layers that you choose to put in there will still provide a smooth motion on the rail, yet it will get rid of the wiggle and that's exactly what I've done and what I'll stick with on my 3D printer. So at this point you're probably asking yourself why the heck would you want to use the linear bushings with aluminium rods when you can just as easily use the 8mm steel with the linear ball bearings that have been tried and true. Well I have mentioned I want to reduce the weight of the X gantry so I can increase my print speed and or acceleration but how much weight are we actually saving here? Let's find out. 
Here's a set of scales with some double-sided tape on top just to make sure that the rails don't roll off as I'm measuring. I'll tear out that double-sided tape. We'll start with the 8mm steel rods. These are just off my Y-axis on my Prusa i3 3D printer. It's one, get them centered. That's two, so we're looking at 273.8 grams just for those two. And if we introduce three of the LM8 UU bearings, we're up to a total of 314 grams. Switch over to the aluminium rods, tear out the scales, put on the first length, and the second length, 112.5. We'll introduce one of the constrained double bushings and a single bushing. We're looking at 131.4 grams. So that's a weight saving of 183 grams. But how does that compare to a stepper motor? If you were using a direct drive extruder, you'd commonly use one of these shorter NEMA 17 motors. I'll tear out the scales again. Weigh one of these. We're looking at 285, so we're about two thirds of the way of reducing the weight of just another one of these stepper motors. So as I'm using Bowden, it's almost like I've reduced the uh, weight of the entire moving X gantry by almost two stepper motors. As many of you pointed out in the comments on the previous video, the left motor mount was sagging and that was causing the belt to rub on the uh, 20 tooth pulley. The reason for that is as I've had to allow for the y-axis clamp uh, to slot into the left motor mount itself, that meant that I couldn't brace or support the mount high enough. Uh, I could only support it down here, for example, and it was causing quite a lot of uh, downward pull on that uh, particular part. So I've had to integrate the uh, y-axis clamp um, next to the left motor mount and the left motor mount into one piece. Uh, well, they are two pieces, but I've allowed them to sandwich together. So I've reduced the width of the, where the part would slot into the motor to about two millimeters, and I've allowed a two millimeter gap in the uh, left motor mount. So that now allows me to slot the motor uh, mount to the same height that it required with the older setup, but both parts are now sharing the common mounting point. So that also means I'm able to get the, uh, the screw uh, right up uh, underneath where the motor would mount, and that will now support the motor a lot better than what it did with having the screw down here. And to accommodate the integration between these two pieces, that also means that you have to mount them at the same time on your 2020 aluminium extruded frame. So here I've just got the three uh, M5 uh, button head screws preloaded with the T-slot nuts, and that can slide on as one piece straight onto the frame. And here's the left motor mount installed on the printer. You can see it's much better now than what it was in the previous video. There's almost no sagging. There's probably just a touch of sagging. But keep in mind, I'm only printing with a 15% infill at the moment on all these parts, as I don't, I don't want to waste too much plastic on parts that I'm not going to use. And just looking at the uh, end stop for the Y-axis, uh, this is just your standard uh, end stop for all types of 3D printers. It's just uh, like a C-clamp or a horseshoe clamp uh, around the 8mm uh, Y shaft and that can simply slide into place like that. I think for the next iteration of this left motor mount, I'll actually carve out just a little bit here, seeing as there's about 5mm of waste here, just so I can slide that in a bit further. And also um, it's resting a bit on there, so that'll also uh, be flat once I make that change. Looking at the X-axis end stop, it's actually attached to the new X carriage itself. So yes, it's coming along for the ride. Uh, it's nestled underneath the belts, as you can see. So sandwich between the belts and the mounting plate for your uh, print head. And when you slide your X carriage across, it simply homes on the uh, XY joiner. So wherever that is, it'll, it'll home. That also means that you can home the X-axis independent of the Y-axis, which some Core XY printers uh, have to home the y-axis first before homing the x-axis. Uh, you can also see the way that I've changed uh, with the, the belt tightening system. On the left, the two belts simply cable tie directly on, but on the right we have uh, three screws. Here's, uh, say, three uh, 20 millimeter M3 screws. You cable tie the other end of the belts to this part and then screw in and that'll tighten your belts. A concern that was raised in the comments of the previous video was to do with the smooth idlers. So they're just uh, two 6233 
uh, flanged bearing sandwiched together and the belt running along the smooth part. In the previous video the teeth were actually running along that and the concern was the, uh, the teeth would actually start to squish over time. So I've just simply flipped around both of the belts coming out of the motors and I'll show you that now. I move down here, you can see the twist in the belt coming out from the uh, far side of the motor and that twist runs all the way along through the cavity of the XY joiner and the flat starts on this side and that flat continues all the way around to the next idler through the XY joiner and then finally to the other end of the X carriage. So that's what I've done to address the concerns there. I'll see how I go. Uh, hopefully that works fine because I don't really want to have to buy toothed idlers for this 3D printer. So with all those changes I've made, that should now mean that the core XY system is complete. Hopefully I've covered all the uh, concerns that you guys had in the comments of the previous videos. Uh, I'm giving these aluminium tubes and the bushings a red hot go. Whether they work, whether they don't work, doesn't really matter because it hasn't costed me a great deal to try this. Worst case scenario is I can simply go back to the 8mm uh, hardened steel and the LM8 EU bearings, uh, which means I'm carrying the extra 180 odd grams of weight. I just need to slow down the uh, acceleration and or print speed. Not a big deal, but it'd be nice to give these a go and see how they work. It still moves nice and freely, of course, uh, even after the change with the belts, with the, with the slight skewing of the uh, double bushings uh, on the back of the X carriage here. So that will now allow me to start finally on the Z axis. Stick around for that one.